Tension ran thick within the confines of our flagship as we crossed the hyperlane, the fleet staying in perfect condition. The rays of light flying past the window, streaks of dust screeching past us at light speeds as our warfleet effortlessly sliced through the void of space. I carefully looked up from my gunnery console and allowed my eyes to wander around the ship. The three war leaders sat on an elevated console in the center. Admiral Barbati, a proud Torian with his hooves polished and gilded. Ambassador Sargan of the Achandi to the left, his eight legs perched calmly in front of him in a silent vigil. Master Imbiku to the right, High Warlord of the Ratani people, directing his legions of invasion troops. It was not unusual. We always explored the galaxy with vast numbers of warriors and warships. The warfleet would enter a system, scan it for anything useful, then leave to the next target. After a while, the system would receive science teams and research directors who would do what they do. We met any newcomers to the galaxy with an iron fist and a raised shield. System entry momentarily, my lords, the navigations officer said. Excellent. Prepare hailing frequencies and ready munitions. We won't have another incident like Tailfuhr 3 again, Admiral Barbati commanded, a smug grin crossing his face. Yes, my lord, the communications officer and myself said at the same time as we got to work. I rechecked all my calculations, calling my gunnery teams to attention. The streaking lights outside the window began to slow themselves down to a crawl. Then suddenly we materialized on the other side. Collision alarms began to blare out in every ship as navigation officers and commanders frantically scrambled to stop their ships. What in the mother's tits, Barbaris said as he saw the state of the star system. The view of the system star was blotted out by the silhouettes of an unimaginably huge number of starships, everything from single-person fighter craft to massive super-dreenauts and planet-killing titans. Millions of ships of every possible size, shape, and conceivable design floating within the empty moor of space. One large main-sequence star, one small habitable terrestrial planet, and one massive superstation dry dock, housing thousands of ships. Battle stations, Barbaris commanded. We readied our system, directing turrets forward to the massive armada of warships and starships now arrayed in front of us. If we would fight, then we go with honor. We were vastly outclassed, vastly outnumbered, but we would fight to the last, with honor. Within seconds, every ship's shields and cannons were maxed out, ready to fight. Something wasn't right. We sat at the ready, waiting for our fleet to be vaporized by a hail of unimaginable cannon fire. I sat at my console with my finger on the button, ready to fire the first volley. Something was off. We are the Imperium. It matters not what kinds of firepower you have, you will submit to the ethereal rule of the Grand Emperor. We are the sons of Shivari, and we are immortal. Stand and fight! Barbaris barked through the open communication channels, rousing us to full combat mode. Our shields were the best in the galaxy, the finest laser weapons of any empire, and the strongest armor plating of any race. We wouldn't go down without a fight. Something still wasn't right. We sat for a full minute, receiving nothing but silence. Deathly, empty silence. I took the initiative, my job, basically. Scanning Titan-class warship direct front for weaknesses, I idly said to my gunnery crew. A few tense moments followed. Derelict, I said. The readout said that the Titan was completely abandoned. Most of its components were missing. Even a basic scan said its superstructure was heavily compromised. It produced no energy signatures. Even the telltale background radiation caused by a reactor simply existing wasn't there. Um, scanning Titan class to port side 20. I said again. The turrets on the ship immediately redirected towards the warship to the left in a concerted, well-practiced dance of steel. Derelict, functional, but abandoned. No life signs, no power signatures. I said again. The readouts made no sense. This makes no sense. The Titan was in pristine, battle-ready condition, but there was nobody in it. 
perform broad spectrum scan of local area. I was going to say we caught them off guard, but they should have responded by now, Barbaris ordered. Yes, my lord, I said, and immediately got to work. I did as ordered and started getting readouts back. A few minutes later, I began listing out targets. Dreadnought class, derelict. No weapons, super dreadnought, derelict, no power signatures, battleship class, empty shell with no interior, possible cargo ship, empty, no reactor, no point defense, broad scan of 70 craft, fighter class, derelict, no power source, not even fabric in the seats. I finished listing some of the more notable targets and looked at my commander with a raised brow. What is this star system? Perform a deep scan of the local terrestrial planet. What's going on here? Barbaris commanded as he stood up from his seat. Scanning. Deep scans produce no response from the local area. No machines, no drones, no robotic signatures. Nothing. Hold, she replied in turn. A few tense moments passed. At this point I called all turrets to stand down and perform precision scans and start taking photographs of the area using their gun cameras. I relayed the same orders, but made the fleet maintain their formation. I'm getting millions of individual computer signals, small localized transmissions, all broadcasting the same message, running it through translation software. Hold, she said. We all looked at her, waiting impatiently. She listened for a few more tense moments. Message reads, for the lost, for the fallen, rest in peace. I used my command console to reload one of the cannons, a ballistic shell filled with a visual scanner probe. A quick thump released it, and it flew through the massive number of empty ships, hurtling towards the planet. Barbaris gave me a quizzical look, but didn't stop me. Three, two, one, impact. Receiving visuals, now, I said, and brought up the image on my console. The entire planet was arranged into a strange square grid pattern that was formed out of carved stone marble walls, several units high. Inside each square plot, arrayed in perfect rows, were various small smooth stones with writing carved into them, planted into the ground. A scan indicated underneath each stone was the decomposing body of a biological life form. A quick translation revealed that some of the stones had the name, origin, and species of the creature buried beneath it engraved on the stone. Most of the stones had no writing, or simply had the phrase, Rest in Peace, written on it. Each of the square plots were varied in size to one degree or another, and each one had a different style or composition. Some were just acres and acres of straight, plain stones jutting out from the ground, while others had intricate carvings of statues and buildings covering them. Most of the planet was little more than light rolling hills and empty grasslands. Any occupied area was art of these strange burial grounds. I moved the probe around to look at the local area, specifically one of the larger structures within the stone grid. I directed the probe myself with remote controls and took a look around. Massive wooden carved doors barred entry and I almost lost my cool at the sight of the glass in the stonework. The craftsmanship was nothing short of beautiful. Solid blocks of marbled stone, intricately carved and chipped with precision tools. Even if all this was done by machine, it was very clear it was done slowly and with a lot of premeditation, care and thought. The windows were basic glass coverings, but stained in various colours to create a mystical atmosphere, reflecting strange and beautiful colours around the area and inside the building. I peeked through, finding solid marble blocks inside, each one holding the decomposing body of a life form. Well, I don't know who or what did this, but I like it. The craftsmanship is magnificent, I said arbitrarily, as I recalled the probe from the planet's surface. It's obviously a graveyard to cater to the ships here. It seems to be a scrapyard of some kind, but who the flaming fuck in their right minds would scrap or salvage fully functional warships, titans, dreadnoughts, cargo ships? By all rights, they are fully working. Why strip them? Is the Empire responsible for this in hard times? Or are they abandoning these because they have better weapons? So many questions, Barbaris asked, seemingly half-talking to himself. 
Well, we can find out. I just got a ping. Active life form on board the large station orbiting the planet, the comm officer said. This is my job, Barbaris. We can resolve this without violence. I will meet them. Maybe we can make sense of this nonsensical situation, Ambassador Sargon said, getting up off his seat. What? What of honor and glory for the Empire? He protested, stomping his hoof angrily. Oh, shut up, you stupid blowhard. Any race that builds these kinds of warships is one I refuse to tangle with. There is honor in combat, not in suicide. Ready my shuttle now. I need to know what's going on. Ambassador Sargan said calmly, berating Barbaris for his efforts. The Admiral admitted defeat and slumped into his chair with a grumble as Sargan headed towards the shuttle bay. With permission, I joined, grabbing my pulse rifle and heading for the shuttle myself. The trip was short but harrowing, as our pilot had incredible difficulty weaving us through the tangled remains of a star system sized scrapyard. We arrived at the docking arm of the station, massive in its own right, and docked without incident. The atmosphere surrounding the station was strangely calming as we walked through the docking arm into the main hallway, and there it was, bipedal, three units tall, two eyes, two arms, two legs, one head. Strangely cute-looking, pale-skinned creature. Mammalian in nature, I guessed. It was humming a tune to itself while using some kind of strange machine to polish the floor. Greetings there, Ambassador Sargan said loudly, snapping the creature out of its janitorial daze. Giant fucking spider, the creature screamed, seemingly in terror, then began to retreat. It suddenly stopped in its tracks and looked again at the greeting party. Wait, spiders, giant or otherwise, don't talk. Hello there, new neighbors, it said and smiled as it headed towards us. It grabbed Ambassador Sargan's foot and shook it vigorously in what we presumed to be a greeting, then did the same to others, grabbing one of their hands and shaking it with a bit too much force. Welcome to the moth yard, he said with a smile, then resumed polishing the floor. Um... Thank you. May I speak with your leader? Ambassador Sargon said. That's me. I'm Martin. I'm also the chef, the salvager, the electrician, the janitor, and the mechanic. I also make the best space mushroom gumbo you will ever eat, he said simply, and carried on with his polishing. Um, okay then. What is this place? Why are you alone here? This is a mothball salvage yard. Ships that have been outdated, outmoded, or too damaged to be of use get sent here to be disassembled. Of course, there are war-damaged ships too, hence the graveyard that's on that planet there. Then there's the occasional derelict that gets swept up into the quantum net that ends up here too, all disassembled, smelted into ingots then sold or used to build new ships he said as he filled up a container on the strange device with a sweet-smelling wood polish. Ah, I see. Well, actually, I don't, but... Anyway, why are you the only life-form here? The ambassador asked again. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Yeah, about a... Uh, eight hundred years ago, I guess. Eight, was it? Yeah, almost eight hundred years. They did the whole civilization ascension thing. At least most of us did. I found it very boring, you know. I mean, there's still plenty of universe here, so why start your own new one? Silly humans. In any case, I felt we couldn't just leave our fleets empty around the universe, so I volunteered to stay here and clean up all the trash, he stated simply, and resumed cleaning the floor. Our response to all this was simply, wait, what? We stood silent with our jaws on the floor, just staring blankly at this creature that was just casually polishing the floor. It was twenty minutes before I suddenly decided to talk. I don't know my motivation, but it happened. So, your species ascended to the ether and transcended existence to create their own universe. Why did they leave you behind? I asked, breaking the awkward silence. They didn't leave me behind. I can go any time. I just felt there was more to learn. Then I found this place and decided to set up shop here. Been here around 700 years. Been stripping ships here since. It's fun. Peaceful. Meh. He shrugged his shoulders and carried on. I see. Uh, can I ask something? I said. 
He stopped his work and approached me. He got uncomfortably close and stared directly into my soul. You want one of those Titan-class ships, don't you? I swallowed nervously and trembled a bit. Um, please. Okay, he said, and put a set of access key cards in my hand. Wait, what? Well, you did say please. It's the big purple one by the cargo ships. That should be plenty for your needs. Not like I have any need for it. And besides, you did say please. He simply stated and started whistling a tune as he watered the various potted plants around the building. Ambassador Sargon and most of his retinue passed out and I really, really needed to sit down.